In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we hear the psalmist cry out, For the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Trusting in the Lord's eagerness to forgive, let us call to mind our sins, and if we can deal, let us do so. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves, and have you rise from them, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus saying, 
Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, when they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I've come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God the one who was coming into the world. When she, had, when she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord.
In today's gospel, as we know, Jesus had a great love for Martha and Mary and for Lazarus, their brother. Lazarus becomes sick, but the Lord knows that all will be well. The sickness is not to end in death, he says. Rather, through it, the Son of Man may be glorified. Jesus tells his disciples, let us go back to Judea. They respond, Rabbi, with the Jews only just trying to stone you, you are going back there again? In other words, be not afraid. The only thing to fear is God alone, and happier are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. So the Lord and his disciples are on their way back to Judea, and the Lord states that Lazarus had fallen asleep, because in the mind of Christ, it was only a temporary thing. But he had to clarify to, his, to the disciples that Lazarus had in fact died in order to ease their confusion. They arrive in Bethany, and Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Many came from Jerusalem, which was not too far away, to console Martha and Mary. Martha meets up with Jesus, and she knows that Christ is the Messiah. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would never have died. I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus says with authority to Martha and all of his disciples then and today, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he should die, will come to life. So Martha goes to her sister Mary and tells her Jesus is in the area. Mary goes to the Lord, and the first thing she says to him is exactly what her, what her sister said earlier. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would never have died. So Mary is grieving, Martha is grieving, many of the people that came to see Martha and Mary are grieving as well. And, and so they're taking the Lord to the tomb, and Jesus began to weep. Jesus began to weep. Jesus Christ was fully human and fully divine. He was without sin, but he was fully human. He was then, and he is now, fully aware of the human condition, how we hurt, how we grieve, how the world can seem so overwhelming at times, how we feel true sorrow for the sins of our past, how our physical or emotional anguish can be so tough to deal with at times. That is why he's a Lord of tremendous compassion and mercy, because he was fully human. Do not ever be afraid or embarrassed to shed a tear. Ever be afraid or embarrassed to shed a tear. Ever. Because all tears come from God, every single one of them. Tears show that we love, how we care about others, and how we love our, lo our Lord with all of our hearts, our souls, our strength and our minds. Just as Jesus loved Martha and Mary, Lazarus, and his Heavenly Father, and our Heavenly Father. Again, Jesus is filled with emotion as he gets near the tomb. He says a prayer to the Heavenly Father so that the crowd would believe that you sent me, that the Heavenly Father sent him. The people have moved the large stone that was in front of the tomb, and the Lord says loudly, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. Lazarus comes out with linens wrapping his body and his face wrapped in cloth. Untie him, Jesus says, and let him go free. Untie him and let him go free. With the Lord in, their life, in our lives, there is true freedom and joy to proclaim and live the gospel message of Jesus Christ without fear or reservation. This Lenten season, May we be set free from anything that is holding us back from a powerful relationship with Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, and the one and only way to salvation, to be the people of authentic love that the Lord is calling us to be every moment and every day of our lives. Praise be Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, now and forever.
the season of Lent years its conclusion, and we look ahead to Holy Week. Let's place our prayers and petitions before our Lord who suffered, died, and rose to the life. for the church. May we have the courage to live in the freedom of the children of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the nation of the world. May our leaders hear those who cry out in poverty, survive in the midst of war, and struggle with discrimination. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and all for whom call it home. May we use our plentiful resources for the benefit of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our and candidates. May they prune away all traces of sin. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for an abiding respect for God's gift of life. May we serve the well-being of all lives, from those about to be born into this world to those about to depart from it. The word of the Lord. Lord of mercy, hear our we pray for those who face serious illness. May your loving presence be known to all. We pray to the Lord. pray for the beauty and splendor of the world God has shared with us. May we always be thankful for this gift. We pray to the Lord. Lord mercy, hear our we pray for all who have died. May they see the Lord face to face. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of Lois Schuster, for whom our Mass is offered. May all we hope for give glory to God by serving the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord mercy, we pray together the prayer of the COS Rise Holdings. Father, this is the season that our hearts are filled with the Spirit, and this will be the Lord of the kingdom of God. And the prayer of the rest is the sincere desire to be close to you. We bow to this moment to the side of you, and then to the us to the end. The Lord is coming to the kingdom of God, and the sincere of our hearts.
brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and my Father. Through us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For his true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and his eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race. He leads us by sick mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. Their voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we declare. <laughs> So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory. Saint Helena and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession and presence 
We rely from faith in the outcome. We have been sacked by a smart reconciliation. We pray, Lord, in the of peace and salvation of all the world. We're pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our bishop, we order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gain for your own. This is graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, who will restore the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in me, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Away the sins of the world, for us, the most called to the suffering of 
participating in the <clears throat> liturgy from home, please join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself fully to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen.
Parvalu Day or Children of God Award is a special recognition awarded by the church to a bear, the Rebolo Scout, for the advancement in religious knowledge and spiritual growth. The program is designed to help Scout develop an awareness of God's love for each one of his spe special and unique created beings. In completing the Parvalu Day program, Wyatt has explored the presence of God in his daily life and learned how he can show God his appreciation for his blessings of sharing his gifts with others. We pray that Wyatt will continue to develop as a member of the parish and the body of Christ. Be aware of the blessings and responsibilities of God, of, out of God's love for us. Wyatt, congratulations on the, on the award. Let's give Wyatt a big applause. Perfect fit, Lion job. Peace. <laughs> so, when you buy the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O oh Lord. Through them, we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The not few announcements. Candle bearers, ushers, Eucharist ministers, lectors, and cross bearers are needed at, at our liturgies on Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday. Sign up sheets are in the gathering space. In celebration of those coming into the church, We'll be hosting the receptions following the Easter Vigil Mass uh, on April 8th. Help us need a setup, clean up, and food. Sign up sheets in the kiosk. Our kiosk. St. Mary's hosting our first ever volunteer day at Good Samaritan's Thrift Store on April 22nd from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Sign up sheets on the kiosk in the gathering space. You're invited to attend the Prison Mass at Cathedral St. Helena on Tuesday, March 28th at noon. There will be no 12th day Mass on March 28th that day. Join us for evening prayer followed by soup and bread on March 31st starting at 5 30 p.m. For today's live closing rally will be on, on Saturday, April 1st at 3 p.m. The rally will be held at the Knights of Columbus Hall. ACU, thank you. We are at 65% of our pledge goal and 26% parish households. Stewardship appeal, thank you to 13% of households that responded to the appeal. There's still time for prayerful consideration and response. This weekend is the Eucharist of Congress held down at Carroll College. Tomorrow at 12.20 p.m. there will be a Eucharistic procession at the cathedral. We'll probably be inside the cathedral. The plan is to go to Carroll uh, from the cathedral, but with the weather being the way it is, probably a uh, the session in the cathedral itself, starting at 12. The Lord be with you. <laughs> now, Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.